Welcome. In this video, I will be showing you how you can encrypt or decrypt data in the database using Spring Data JPA. First, let me demonstrate it with a diagram. Let's say we have an entity in our Spring Boot application. For example, we have an employee entity with some fields like ID, name, and salary. And our Spring Boot application is connected to a database. So in a normal scenario, data will be stored as plain text in the database. In case of saving the data, the data flows through the network from application to the database and gets saved in the form of plain text. For example, the employee name is VKS Tech. This is in the form of plain text and this same data is stored inside the database. And when we retrieve it, the same plain text will again travel through network and reach to the application. Now let's see what happens if we provide some encryption technique. For this video I'll be focusing on AES encryption and decryption. For this purpose, we will use something called as attribute converter. As the name suggests, it converts the entity attributes based on some logic before saving it into the database. Hence, we will be adding the AES encryption and decryption logic inside our attribute converter. There will also be a secret key that will be provided to this conversion logic. This key will help in the encryption and decryption process. Now while saving, the plain text data passes through our attribute converter, and based on the encryption logic, the data is converted into encrypted text. For example, the employee name VKS Tech first passes through attribute converter, then based on AES encryption it gets converted into ABC123, and then this ABC123 gets saved into the database. In case of retrieving the data, this encrypted text ABC123 gets fetched from database and again it passes through attribute converter. Now based on the decryption logic it again gets converted into VKS tech. So in this way we can use attribute converter to implement the AES encryption technique. Now let's see the practical implementation. For this I'll be creating a Spring Boot project using Spring Initializer. You can also use Spring Initializer website to do the same process. I'll add the project name as encryption demo, build tool as Gradle, add the project name and artifact name, select the Java version and packaging, and click on next. For dependencies, I'll add Spring Data JPA, Lombok, and MySQL connector. And click on finish. If you're doing it for the first time, it may take some time to build the project. Once the project is loaded, go inside the package and create a folder called as config. Here I'll be adding my attribute converter. Let's create a class and name it as AES encryptor. Add the configuration annotation. This class will implement the attribute converter interface. Here we need to provide two data types. First denotes, what type of data we will be storing in database. I'm taking object since I want to save every type of object. And second type denotes, how the data will be stored in the database. Here we'll add string, because we'll be converting every type of object into encrypted string. Let's implement the methods provided by this interface. So it has two methods. First one is convert to database column. This will be used to convert our plain text object into encrypted text. And the second one is convert to entity attribute. This will be used to decrypt the database value back to plain text. We will provide the implementation for these methods later. First we will add the AES key required for encryption and decryption. So I'll create a final string called encryption key and assign some value to it. So an AES key can be either of these three size. 16 bytes, 24 bytes, or 32 bytes. And since in Java, one character takes two bytes of memory, therefore the AES key can be of 8, 12, or 16 characters long. Here we will take the longest key length, and add the value of this encryption key as, this is test key. You can set it to whatever you like. Now I will also specify the encryption cipher which we are using, and it is AES. Now here I need two more objects. First one is key object which will use our encryption key string. And second one is cipher object which will use our encryption cipher string. Now let's initialize these two objects. For this I will create getters for them. 
Inside the get key method, I'll check whether the key is null or not. If it is null, then I will assign a new secret key spec object to it. Now let me remove static from here and convert these getters into private methods because we are not going to use it outside this class. Now the constructor for secret key spec accepts two fields in the constructor. First one is the byte value for the encryption key string and second is the encryption cipher. Similarly, in the get cipher method, we will check if cipher is null or not. And let me remove static from here also. So if it is null, then we'll assign cipher.get instance and pass the encryption cipher string value here. Here we need to throw these exceptions, but I'll remove these and add the general security exception because it is the parent of those two exceptions. Now, let's create a init cipher method, which will be used to initialize the cipher into the memory. This method will have an integer parameter which describes the encryption mode. In other words, it describes whether we want to encrypt or decrypt the data with the cipher. Here, just call the get cipher method and call init method on it. Pass the encryption mode and specify the encryption key. Throw the same exception from here. And that's all we have to do in this method. Now, let's provide the implementation for this method convert to database column. First step is to check if the attribute value is null or not. If it is, then simply return null. Then call the init cipher method and pass mode as cipher.encryption mode. Annotate it with sneaky throws to simply throw the exception if it occurs. Next we need to write some conversion logic. So first we need to get byte array by calling serialization utils dot serialize on attribute value. Now I will just return the value I get by calling base 64 dot get encoder dot encode to string and passing our get cipher dot do final on the byte array we got from the above line. Similarly, in convert to entity attribute method, first check if db data is null or not. If it is, then simply return null. Again call the init cipher method, but this time we will pass cipher.decryption mode l because we want to decrypt the data in this method. Now get the byte array by calling get cipher.do final on base64.get decoder.decode and pass the db data here. Now just return serialization utils dot deserialize and pass the byte array value. With this we have successfully provided the implementation for the attribute converter. Now let's quickly create our entity so that we can test our code. So create a new package called entity. And create a class called as card details. Here I'll add some fields. First will be the string card holder name. Second will be integer CVV. Next I will take a double value because I want to show you encryption of all the data types. So let's say it is an amount field. Next I'll take a boolean field called as active. I'll also add an ID field and add the ID annotation on it. For generation strategy I'll use identity type. Add the entity annotation on the class. Also add the lombox data and no argument constructor annotations. Now we will add one more annotation called the convert annotation on the fields which we want to encrypt and specify our AES encryptor as the converter. I'll copy this annotation and paste on all the fields which I want to be encrypted. Now let's create the repository package. Here create an interface and name it as card detail repository. This will extend the JPA repository of type card detail and integer. Annotate it with repository annotation and it is done. Now we will do one more thing here. 
we will transfer our encryption key to properties file. So go to the AES encryptor class and cut this key. Now go to the application.properties folder inside resources and provide the property name. I'm taking the name as AES encryption key and paste the encryption key value here. Now we will access this property inside our AES encryptor using value annotation. So remove the final keyword from here and remove the assignment and add at the rate value. Make sure you're selecting the Spring Framework's value annotation and not the Lombok one. Inside the annotation, add double quotes, dollar, curly braces and the property name AES encryption key. In the application properties, add all the database related properties such as database name, username and password. With this, our application is completed. Now let's test this functionality. Go to test folder and open encryption demo application test file. Create a new test by adding annotation test and creating a method. I'll name it as insert data. Inside this method, I'll create an object by writing card detail card detail equal to new card detail. Then I will set card holder name as VKS tech. CVV as 123. Amount as 100.0. And set as active to false. Now here I will auto via the card detail repository. Now call the save method of this card detail repository and pass our card detail object. Now create another test called as retrieve data. Here I will write card detail card detail equal to card detail repository dot find by id and I am passing the value 1 here because that will be our starting id. Now just call get method on this. I will just print this card details to check if the values are saved correctly or not. With this our test class is also ready. Now first I want to run my insert data test, so I will comment this retrieve data test. Click on the run icon to run the test. Our tests have passed and we didn't get any error. Now let's check what data is stored in the database. Refresh this to reflect the changes. Here you can see our encryption demo database is created. Let's go inside tables and see the card detail table. Here you can see the amount, name, CVV and is active all have encrypted values. Hence we can say that our encryption mechanism is working. Now let's see what happens if we retrieve the data. Comment the insert data test and uncomment the retrieve data test. Instead of commenting, you can actually run any specific test by clicking the run icon besides it. Our retrieve data test has also passed. Let's scroll down to see what data is printed. Here you can see it has printed the data in plain text, hence the decryption mechanism is also working. With this our encryption demo project is successfully completed. If you have any doubts, please comment on this video. Thank you for watching.